So welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K24 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with our second off-season rebuild of 2K24, and today it's going to be the Washington Wizards. This Wizards team is not very good. It's not really very surprising considering last offseason they went ahead and kind of traded away their franchise player in Bradley Beal. Now they did go ahead and bring back Kyle Kuzma. They made a trade that brought in Jordan Poole, but as I currently record this video, this team is 14-61 and 61 and they haven't been in the playoff picture in quite some time. So our goal today is to kind of see if we can turn this dumpster fire of a franchise around, hopefully in this video with a championship. As always, let me know any other video ideas down below in the comment section. As I mentioned when I did the first off-season rebuild of 2K24, these aren't going to be daily videos. We're going to kind of slowly increase how many of these we end up doing because obviously I'm not going to do these with teams that are still in playoff contention and nobody wants to see one every single day. So any other video ideas you guys have, make sure you let me know down below in the comment section. But I definitely have been enjoying these, and well, the one I've done so far. And I'm thinking I'm going to enjoy this one today as well. Let's get into it. We are ready to go here in our first season in D.C. It's our first off-season. I'm sure many of you can figure this out, but it's just three off-seasons, three regular seasons versus typically three seasons and three off-seasons. So, yes, I'm very excited, nervous to get into this Wizards rebuild. This is not a good team. And uh, the problem with a team like this is, you know, is there a franchise player here? My answer right now is no until somebody proves me wrong. So finding that's going to be kind of our first goal. Obviously, when we had the Pistons one the other day, we went ahead and used Cade Cunningham as that player, and it worked out very well for us. So obviously, a little bit of a different situation today, but the uh, team's still not good. So we have that in common. Tyus Jones is 28. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do with him. He's a good player. I just I don't really know if he's a starter on a championship caliber team. We'll see. Uh, Jordan Poole is here. Jordan Poole is, is so... It's, it's very interesting for me. You know, I feel like some nights I'm talking about real life right now. You know, you're getting an unplayable guy that's on one of, if not the worst, contracts in the league. And then some other nights, you're like, hey, that's the team that helped the Warriors win the finals in 2022. So, you know, for me, if Jordan Poole can be a little bit consistent, like we were all kind of hoping he would be with the increased role in D.C., I don't really think there's necessarily a problem with having him getting paid this much money. But, you know, if has a lot of those off nights... It's really kind of tricky to argue that he should be kind of staying around here. Uh, Bilal Koulibaly was their first round pick in the 2023 NBA draft, number seven overall. It's not a bad rookie season, more defensive oriented player. He's not going to be somebody in all likelihood that we're going to be building a franchise around. But 19 years old, definitely some room for growth. I'm excited to have him. Landry Shamit, probably nothing but a depth piece. You have Johnny Davis, who is just, he's just turning into like an old fashioned draft bust. Like, good God, man. What was he? 10th overall, good lord. I mean, you got to respect the guys that like don't even really show you anything to get excited about. Like these days, you know, you don't really see like an old fashioned draft boss, a guy who just completely fucking sucks. And that's what Johnny Davis is kind of looking like right now. Maybe there's a little something there at some point in time, but I'm, uh, I wouldn't be holding your breath if I was a Wizards fan. Danny Abdi has kind of come on very nicely. I think a little bit of an expanded role for him in terms of scoring. Still only 23 years old, locked up on a four-year contract. like to see it. Corey Kispert could be a good shooter for us off the bench, whether we have him starting bench. We'll figure it out, but he's definitely a nice rotational piece. Power forward spot, Kyle Kuzma, kind of the face of this franchise right now. Uh, they ended up bringing him back on a four-year contract. His name... Oh, I have to update this game. Uh, his name was definitely floated around in some trade rumors near the deadline. He ended up wanting to stay with the Wizards. So we're going to go probably year-to-year -year on a basis with him again with the multi-year contract. Isaiah Levers, Anthony Gill, Patrick Baldwin Jr., just depth. And then the center spot made the big trade with the Dallas Mavericks at the deadline, sending out Daniel Gafford, who's been absolutely fantastic for Dallas, by the way. But our center position is definitely of need right now. So I'm going to go ahead and update this game. Then we got a very important offseason to get to. Player retirements right here, really probably nobody notable from us, at least. I don't see LeBron retiring, so I don't have to override that. We look at Staff Popovich, I'll override, give him one more here with Victor Wembanyama, just make him basically unstoppable. Uh, and the draft lottery is going to be very big, very big force, excuse me. We were projected number one overall. I don't know the exact protections on it. I'm pretty sure there are protections on it, though. And uh, we end up with the fifth overall pick. I don't know how many videos in a row I can have the worst record in the league and fall to number five. I know somebody was talking about it in the comment section of my Pistons rebuild the other day. But, yeah, man, it's like it's something with, like, the the script in the game or whatever the hell it is. It's just it always kicks you when you're projected number one down at five. It's very, very strange. Uh, Brian Keefe. There's okay ratings there. I mean, maybe I'll give him one more season, especially because his contract is expiring. Because Wes Unsell Jr. was the head coach of the Wizards before, and then they made the midseason firing. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the ratings are okay. He's expiring after this year, so we'll give him one more season and then go from there. Okay, so we're up to the draft with this fifth overall pick. Obviously not an ideal pick to have when you have the worst record in the league. And uh, I think at this point, 
I kind of want to trade up because I kind of have an option or an idea of what I want to do in this draft. So let's see if we can do that. So the Detroit Pistons have the number two overall pick. I know it's not number one, but in an ideal world anyways, it'll probably cost us less to get this number two overall pick. So how about we make a little bit of a deal here, Detroit? And uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of what else I could give up, there's not a lot of players here. If you want a Morier, you can have him. And then I'd rather hang on to number 27 overall. Is there any way I can just get this done with some seconds? Yeah, probably not. I'm getting a little... Oh my god, okay, it actually worked. All right, Alexander Saar is the guy I want. If you weren't able to figure it out, I am hoping, anyways, that my draft plans... What the fuck? What the fuck? Oh my god, are the are the Utah Jazz going to screw me right now? They definitely are, aren't they? No, they take Zach Stray. I cannot pronounce this dude's last name. Is it Rizache? Something like that. I'm, I'm just terrible with names. But Alexander Saar, that was the guy we were looking for. Obviously, hoping to be the face of our franchise, our, our generational center. I know he's obviously not Wembenyama, but you understand what I'm saying. Our difference maker, if you will. All right, Bobby Clintman's here. He's a power forward. Definitely could use some power forward depth. So, Bobby Clintman, welcome to the team. Again, not going to pretend I know a lot about him. Six foot ten out of Wake Forest. Excited to have him here. So, 78 overall, 72 overall for Bobby here. And uh, I think at this point, it's just deciding about the personnel decisions with this team moving forward. Johnny Davis, the only reason, the only reason I'm picking up this five plus million dollar team option here is because for some unknown reason, even if players suck and they're big draft busts, whatever, if they were high first round picks like Davis was, and he's still young on the rookie contract, they're valuable. I don't know why. It's some part of 2K that's been broken forever. But he is. This is not a realistic rebuild. So we're just going to go ahead and roll with it. Um, Isaiah Levers, I could consider qualifying. But other than that, Champagny, no. Butler, Bernard, probably just not guys we really want to have in the rotation moving forward if we're trying to win games. So um, in terms of our free agents, it's Gill, it's Levers with uh, bird rights on them. And then other than that, it's a decent free agency class. Gonna have to be some big decisions made about the personnel with this team. We do have a lot of money being taken up by some guys. I don't really want to pay all this money to. So uh, but definitely got at least one more trade coming here. We're going to attempt to work on a deal here with the Orlando Magic and see if they'd be willing to maybe make a kind of crazy trade and give us Jalen Suggs for Jordan Poole. Now, I have no idea how this money situation is going to work. It appears that Orlando has a little bit of cap space, so maybe they could take on the bigger contract hit of Jordan Poole. But Suggs is definitely somebody I'd like to have on this team a little bit more than Poole. So, how would we make a deal? You want Kuzma for Cole Anthony? I mean, it's not terrible. I just wouldn't have a power forward then. So how about if instead I maybe give you somebody like Patrick Baldwin Jr. and then I just throw you like endless second round picks? No, how about if I just keep giving you more? I mean, the second round picks are useless. They still won't do it. Um, all right. How right. I'd rather hang on to Davis, as weird as that sounds, just because I honestly do think he could be somewhat valuable. <sighs> yeah, this kind of sucks. Okay, they do it though. End of the day, Johnny Davis is never going to play. And Jalen Suggs is going to come in. He's going to be an upgrade both contract-wise, overall-wise, talent-wise than we have with Jordan Poole. I never have a problem with Jordan Poole, but kind of looking at the team from a, a bigger picture, you know, it's just I can't have somebody who's so inconsistent being my starting point guard. I like Jalen Suggs, obviously tremendous defensive player. And I'm super excited to have him here. Uh, the shooting guard spot's interesting because Koulibaly probably could start in an ideal world. Um, unfortunately, we don't have our first round pick this year, so I kind of want to be as good as possible. Now, I don't know exactly what the protections are on that draft pick, but I know the Houston Rockets have it. Maybe dates back to the Russell Westbrook trade. I don't know that for a fact, though. Um, but other than that, I know Rashawn Holmes is going to be in some sort of deal. I want to see what our money situation is right now, because a guy like OG Ananobi, we have the funds for, maybe slide him in as the shooting guard. Wouldn't be the worst idea in the world. I mean, just looking like there's not a lot of shooting guards here. I mean, Max is going to get, it's going to get matched no matter what you do here. It's unfortunate, but it's just the reality of the situation. I mean, I, I'll throw the man an offer. I'm like saying there's a 99% chance that the Philadelphia 76ers are going to match that contract. So other than that, I see Malik Monk, Clay Thompson, just probably not at this point in his career. So honestly, a year of Ananobi wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I do want to see who is his other contract from. It's from the New York Knicks, about four over 88, 87 million. So it's about 22 million bucks a year. Yeah, I think we can beat that. I, we're just going to go ahead. I'll give him about 23 a year with a player option. We'll give him next year. All right, hopefully one of these goes through. As you can see, um, excuse me, um, Tyrese Maxey did not accept. I'm assuming it was probably going to get matched anyways. Tyus Jones is here. I would like to maybe see if there's a way to bring him back. I know if I renounce everybody here, no, still don't have the money. All right, I'm going to obviously prioritize the starting shooting guard spot than the backup point guard spot with Tyus Jones. 
Philadelphia was matching that contract anyways. But super excited to have OGN and Obi in here. Overall, might take a one-point hit when you move him to the, sh- excuse me, the shooting guard spot. And the game's going to let me ring back Tyus Jones. Beautiful. Exactly what I was looking for. So, um, bolstering this bench unit, I think, is definitely a good idea. We're going to move Ananobi down to the two. It actually goes down two overalls. Jesus Christ. God bless 2K. Um, but no, super excited to have him here. Going to be a fantastic backcourt, especially defensively. And then at this point, I think... We're pretty much all set. I'm going to see if I can get a draft pick for Rashawn Holmes just because he's expiring. Bagley has a team option after this year. Then why not? We'll let Bobby Clintman play a little bit. So um, I also do want to go ahead and just confirm. Oh, wait, no. Bagley's a free agent. Shit. They're both free agents. Um, all right. Whatever. I'll just hang on to Bagley. I think there's probably a little bit a little bit more potential there, if you will, at this point in time in his career. So Rashawn Holmes... Not really anything I love, but the 76ers want to give me some draft picks. That's fine. Um, all right. I will see you guys at the rotation at the start of year number one. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just go on Google, make sure I can fact check if there's any sort of protections if the pick didn't convey here in 2024, which obviously it didn't. We've gone ahead and finalized the rotation, but I want to read you guys off some of the protections that are kind of in place for this draft pick heading forward that according to 2K, we don't actually have this year, but according to fanspo.com, Washington's first round pick, it's actually to New York. I don't know if that was part of a trade at some point, but in this game that says the Rockets own it, I don't really care. Uh, protected for selections 1 through 12 in 2024, obviously it ended up number 5, so we kept it. 1 through 10 in 2025, and 1 through 8 in 2026. So our pick's basically protected all three years if we suck. So if our first round pick this year falls anywhere 1 to 10, I'm taking it back. Just because 2K says it's always unprotected if it doesn't convey in year one, it doesn't necessarily mean that's true. So I'm going to kind of call 2K on their bullshit. I'm taking the draft pick back if it's 1 through 10. More importantly, here's how the rotation is going to look. Jalen Suggs, OG, and Anobi, just a fantastic defensive backcourt. Not expecting a ton in the terms of points per game from them, but again, I think they're a good fit next to each other. I'm excited to see how it works out. Danny Abdia going to be our starting small forward. He's still got Kuzma here at the four. And then Alexander Saar, kind of a future face of our franchise, hopefully, if you will, as our starting center. The bench unit's pretty good. Tyus Jones we brought back. He's going to be our sixth man off the bench, getting 22 minutes a night. Kispert's going to be the backup to Abdia. you got Bilal Koulibaly, hoping to take a bigger role this season. Marvin Bagley, the third, our backup center. And then Bobby Clintman, who we ended up drafting number 27 overall. I think so, anyways, as our backup power forward. So, you know, this team is in a decent spot compared to where we were last season. I would definitely take this group over what they had last year. You know, are we going to be contending with the top teams in the East? Probably not. But you know what? Trending in the right direction is definitely a really good starting point. I'll see you guys at the end of year one. The first season comes to an end. It is yet another MVP for Nikola Jokic. Just insane numbers all across the board. This season, we went 26 and 56. So, Although it's better than the season I simmed up to our first offseason, it's uh, it's still not great. And I'm assuming we're probably going to have our first round pick. Alexander Starr does win Rookie of the Year, though. This is definitely promising heading forward. 15-9-2 with one steal, almost, excuse me, almost two and a half blocks a game. I'll take it. That field goal percentage as a center has to be higher. Three-point percentage. If you're not going to shoot him at a high clip, just don't shoot. I mean, how many did he attempt a game? Just curious. Three-point attempted. Did I miss it? Oh. I see per game. I can see it after. Uh, Chris Paul, six man of the year. Victor Wembanyama is your deep point. Jaden Hardy, most improved. Tyrese Halliburton, clutch player of the year. Mark Dagnalt, head coach of the Oklahoma City Thunder, is your coach of the year. Okay, um, it is a safe bet. I would say that we are probably going to be in the bottom 10 teams in the league. We have the worst record here in the East and actually the worst record in all of basketball. So, um, again, we're moving in the right direction. We're just not necessarily feeling that impact immediately. Kyle Kuzma led us in scoring. Alexander Saar was number two. How many, did I see how many attempted the game? Uh, three point made per game, three point attempts. Okay, so we took almost three three point attempts per game and made less than one, about 0.7. So, um, I mean, on paper, three is not terrible, but if you're shooting them at a, what the hell is it, a 25, 26% clip, maybe you know, lower that number down to one or two, just my opinion. Jalen Suggs, our third option, OG Ananobi, Tyus Jones, Avdia, Bagley, Kispert, Kalubale. Clintman rebounds is going to be Mr. Saar and assists. Wow, we Jesus Christ, we need a real point guard on this team. Denny Avdia. Uh, playoffs are not going to be something we are in here in year one. Uh, oh, wow, Denver was an eight seed and playing team, and they still gave Jokic the MVP. It is a Thunder and a Cavaliers finals. Seven games, Shea Gildas Alexander and the Thunder do get it done. Okay, offseason number two. LeBron, I'm overriding the retirement. I'm sorry, you can get mad at me. I don't want LeBron to retire. Popovich obviously already did that once, meaning he is officially gone. Hall of Fame, CP3, Jersey Retirements, Draft Lottery. Now, this is a very big moment for us. I don't know where this pick's going to land. As you can see, it's projected number one of the Rockets. It's top 10 protected. I checked. I know it for a fact. I'm taking the goddamn draft pick back. 
And uh, let's just see where it lands. And it ends up at number three. So I will be taking the third overall pick back. I will go ahead and give them my next year's one and make sure it has the right protections, all that bullshit. So we'll go from there. But super excited to have the third overall pick. Staff signing. Um, I think it's probably time to move in a different direction. We have a head coaching vacancy. Let's just go. Ooh, Mark Dagnall's here. Just want a coach of the year? I would be remiss if I did not make the man a contract offer, right? I feel like that would be dumb. Do the same thing with Joe Missoula. I love Joe Missoula. He's the head coach of my Boston Celtics. Uh, I'm not a Jason Kidd fan. I'm not going to pretend to be, but I am a Mike Stauffer fan. So I'm going to offer all three of these guys a contract. And Mark Dagnall wants to come in. Mark Dagnall's going to be my new head coach. Super excited to have him here in D.C. So let's head up to the draft right now. I'm going to take my first round pick back, and then we'll go from there. I went ahead and made the trade with the Houston Rockets. I took the third overall pick back, meaning we're going to obviously have access to that draft pick. And now something that is going to be very interesting is just what we want to do with this pick. Because, you know, there are a couple different directions. This is a decent draft class. I know Cooper Flag's obviously here. Probably going to go number one, Dylan Harper, Ace Bailey, VJ Edcott. I mean, these are a lot of talented players here. But it's just the fact, you know, do we have the time to let these guys develop? So... I think if I want to go get anybody, it's probably going to be Cooper Flag, maybe a Kyle Kuzma replacement. We trade him as well. So, I don't know. It says he's ranked fifth. I don't know if he's going to actually go to five. I feel like he always goes number one, but I'll check. Thunder are definitely going to take the back-to-back -back picks. This is some bullshit. No, they take Ace Bailey, and then I'm assuming Cooper Flag's probably going to be their second guy. They make a trade. What's up with these draft day trades? All right, the Clippers take Cooper Flag. I'm going to go get Cooper Flag from them. I know it's a possibility. It's not a likelihood. It's probably going to cost me an extra first, but where the hell are the Clippers? No, they do not want to give me. Why? What the hell is this team? Shit, can I really not trade for them? It's so dumb because if I get a package that like they like enough, I can make a trade. So like I'll do this and then I'll do this and then he'll he'll show up. I just got it. There he is. Okay, let's take this out. Let's take this out. What's it going to cost me? They want some swaps. They'll give me Zubots. I'd rather not. Can I just instead maybe give you like... You want Bobby Clintman? Okay. Cooper Flagg, welcome to the Washington Wizards. I am excited to have him here. He's an 80 overall. Definitely can be my starting power forward here heading into year number two. So it gives me some options of what I want to do. Suggs and Kispert both entering restricted free agency. And this is a pretty talented free agency class. But we have a lot of guys here. I don't know if we have money for like a Jason Tatum. Not really at this point. Even if we did, we have to renounce everybody. So, I don't know. I mean, do I want to maybe explore that possibility? I'm not saying it's out of the picture completely. But it definitely means that, you know, somebody like Kyle Kuzma is probably gone. Maybe even Trey, excuse me, Tyus Jones. So, I'm definitely trading Kuzma though. That's kind of going without, you know, without a doubt. Wasn't terrible for us. Just I think ultimately it's time to move on. So, let's find a trade. Big trade coming here with the Miami Heat. We are sending Kyle Kuzma in a one-for-one -one swap with Jaime Jaquez Jr. We're also getting a 2029 first-round pick. I'm not doing this because I think Jaime Jaquez Jr. is a more talented player than Kuzma. I'm doing this because, one, we get younger. We get two overalls lower, but we get so, so much cheaper. About $18 million is going to be off our books. And uh, Jaime Jaquez Jr. should hopefully develop quite well. I'm excited to have him here. So now comes the possibility, do I maybe want to throw a contract offer at somebody like Jason Tatum here? Now, we weren't very good last year. So if we want to go ahead and do this, we're definitely going to have to give them all max contracts. And again, I'm not really holding my breath on it, the possibility of any of these guys coming here, but I would be stupid not to make them a contract offer. So I'm offering one to the three guys I'd love to all have. Nothing wrong with Braun or Jimmy. They're just a little bit old at this point in time. So, uh, any of you want to come here? Oh my God, we got Donovan Mitchell. All right, Donovan Mitchell, welcome to the team. Um, at this point in time, do I have to renounce everybody? So I don't have to renounce Kispert if I don't want to. I would have to renounce Suggs. So if I want to maybe clear up enough money to hang on to Jalen Suggs, it probably means I have to trade somebody like Jones. Or I could just move Ananobi. Because I have Koulibaly, so you know what? I'll actually do that. Let's go ahead and move OG Ananobi. And then hopefully we can find somebody who can just be a rotation piece for us. OG and OB was fine for us in the one season we had him here, ultimately. Going to eat up a lot of money, though. So I'd rather get somebody a little bit cheaper. So let's see some options here. Potentially somebody not making a shit ton of money. I would really enjoy that. Herb Jones definitely making a little bit less. It's actually probably the best trade I'm going to get. All right, let's go ahead and make the trade with Herb Jones. We're also getting a draft pick here. It's going to save us about $10 million, meaning I should probably be able to hold on to Jalen Suggs, and I can. All right, so while getting Donovan Mitchell, we're still able to retain the services of our point guard. Jason Tatum went to the Clippers. Did I see Brunson went to the Rockets? Good God, man. All right, no offers for Suggs still. We're going to hang on to him. We're going to obviously sign Mitchell, and we got to do this one more day. No offers for Suggs. 
hang on to his cap hold and sign Mitchell. So now I'm going to go ahead and sign Jalen Suggs. Going to bring him back. The 24-year-old is going to be our starting point guard. Maybe the entirety of this video continues to put up good numbers, so we'll see. All right, Jones and Suggs. We have Mitchell, Jones, and Koulibaly here. So, yeah, actually, I just realized I'm probably going to have to make one more trade. Unless, could I maybe have Advia, Advia excuse me, be my backup for? He goes down two overalls. What does Jaime do? He goes down two as well. Um, Here's the thing. I, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't love the idea of having, you know, Danny Avdia start on a championship winning caliber, whatever you want to call it, team. So maybe going ahead and trading him and finding an upgrade all along at this small forward spot. Okay, we just pulled off a very big trade with the New Orleans Pelicans. Went ahead and picked up Brandon Ingram. Now, I had to go ahead and send out Danny Avdia and Herb Jones. I didn't want to have to trade Herb Jones. I'm a big Herb Jones fan. I think a lot of you guys know that. I also send out two first-round picks. But Jones makes a lot more money than Bilal Koulibaly does. And Koulibaly actually had a little bit more trade value, strange enough. So... Yeah, we went ahead and made the trade. Uh, meaning, it's going to be Ingram, Jaime Hawkins Jr. Now I need to find some backup big men. And other than that, we're pretty much all set. Taking a look at the options we have here. Actually going to, wow, this game's going to let me bring back Marvin Bagley. That's insane. Uh, and then the power forward spot, Aaron Wiggins for a season. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. He's only 26. Not bad. All right, cool. We have definitely completely done a 180 with this team. I have a very good feeling we're not going to be even close to the worst team in the league. See you guys at the start of year number two. As we head into our second season here in Washington, we are feeling much, much better about the outlook of a potential playoff season for us here in D.C. I mean, obviously, the Donovan Mitchell signing was very, very big. The Brandon Ingram trade was huge. Drafting Cooper Flag, all things trending in the positive direction. But honestly, this bench unit's insane as well. So here's how it's going to look. Jalen Suggs, Donovan Mitchell, Brandon Ingram, Cooper Flag, Alexander Saar, one through five. Bench unit, Jaime Hawkins Jr. Going to have him in here as our sixth man. I know Koulibaly is a little bit of a... One overall higher, but I like the idea of having a guy like Jaime Hawkins as a six-man good scoring option. A little bit better than Koulibaly, I'd say, but he's still getting big minutes. Uh, Tyus Jones behind him as our seventh man. You still have Marvin Bagley. Newly acquired Aaron Wiggins as our tenth and final guy under new head coach, Mark Dagnall. So, super excited about what this team could be. Wouldn't be surprised if we were an Eastern Conference playoffs team. Maybe even a top four seed. See you guys at the end of year two. Luka Doncic takes home his first career MVP, but more importantly, we go 64-18. and 18. Complete 180 from year number one here in D.C. I am feeling very, very good about the possibilities with this team. So Luka MVP, Cooper Flag Rookie of the Year. It is back-to-back -back seasons with Rookie of the Year's for us here. And uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. Jairus Walker, sixth man. Wemben Yamas, your deep boy. Vince Williams, junior, most improved. John Morant, Clutch Player of the Year. Billy Donovan. Wow, they bring him in to Oklahoma City and... Uh, yeah, they're still pretty good. All right, so we win, as you mentioned, 64 games. It was the second best record in all of basketball. I think Dagnall probably deserved coach of the year. You know, you win a, what, what were we, a 26-win team last season? All the way up to 64, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, Mitchell, Ingram, Flag, Saar, Suggs, Jones. I mean, this team is very, very deep. A lot of scoring options here. Saar led us in rebounds and assists was Donovan Mitchell. So we are facing a playing team in round one. That team's going to be the Brooklyn Nets. Yeah, probably not going to be a very tough... Oh. Okay, not the way I was expecting the first playoff series to go. What the fuck happened? I'm not really sure. I need a little bit more out of Suggs. I need some more out of Hawkes. I mean, good God, man. I, I need This is the situation that I need Donovan Mitchell to take over. I understand we have a lot of guys who can score the basketball, but this is where we need that next step. Didn't happen, though. All right, a heartbreaking loss, nonetheless. A very Miami Heat, Milwaukee Bucks-esque and, uh, yeah, Thunder going to win it all. SGA Finals MVP. All right, final offseason. LeBron obviously can't override that retirement. James Harden calling it a career man's down to an 80 overall. And, uh, yeah, you know, I, I think for this team, we have to decide if this entire core is good enough moving forward or if, you know, obviously we won of our draft pick. Oh, good. The Thunder just won back-to-back -back championships. Give them the number one overall pick. Uh, we have to decide if we want to keep everybody here moving forward. I think Dagnall did a fantastic job for us. It's Again, it's tough to win 64 games and lose in round one and be happy about it. But, you know, you live and you learn. I will not be drafting anybody this year. I have, oh, did not want to do that. I am just going to trade this pick. I don't really need it. So let's go ahead and do this. And thank you very much, 76ers. All right, up to the team player options here. Koulibaly, Hakez, Saar, all coming back. Qualifying, we have none. Free agency, do we have any big names in free agency? Not really. I mean, obviously, it's insane to see Luke in free agency. A five-year, $304 million contract offer. From the Dallas Mavericks to go back. Um, I think it's actually even a lot more than that in real life. But clearly, we don't have the funds. And uh, yeah, time for some big decisions.
Oh my god, we just pulled off a blockbuster with the Sacramento Kings and added ourselves one De'Aaron Fox. We sent out Jalen Suggs, Marvin Bagley, and two first-round picks. I'm very surprised that's all it took. But honestly, adding another really elite player here in Fox is something I'm really excited about. I definitely could have gone ahead and maybe upgraded one of my front court options. But honestly, I think they both did their job really well. That's not to say Suggs didn't do his job well. But on top of the fact that both of these guys are on rookie contracts... Suggs is obviously making a little bit more, maybe a little bit more in today's value. And Darren Fox is now a Washington Wizards. So we do need to find ourselves a new backup center. Um, I don't suspect that's going to be insanely hard. A guy like Yusuf Nurkic sitting here in free agency. Would he have any interest in signing with us? He would. We're going to bring in Yusuf Nurkic as our backup center heading into the third and final season. And then one other thing I want to check is our possibility we can maybe trade Wiggins. Because we have some draft picks less than maybe upgrade this backup power forward spot. I think about $7 million. Oh, I'm not seeing anything like Zach Eady here. Oh, God. And Filipowski, they're both on the Pelicans. That's insane. I saw Dalton connect. Uh, to Monty Kamara, I mean, maybe. I'm just curious. If I go power forwards, and again, it's probably not a very long list. Guys making like $7 million or less. Again, probably not many names, but let's just see. Just curious. $7.5 million. All right, the first guy actually under contract is G.G. Jackson. Is there a possibility these contracts match up? They do not. And so Jackson's not an option. Matas Buzelos, but I do draft him a decent amount. And then Kamara is kind of the final guy. Yeah, whatever. I'll see you guys at the start of year three. One quick trade before we set the rotation here at the start of year three. We're picking up P.J. Washington from the Houston Rockets. It's not a significant upgrade over Aaron Wiggins, but it's just a little bit of an upgrade. So excited to have him here. We're also going ahead and acquiring Caleb Martin. Can be a good depth piece for us. Let's set the rotation. Last season was great, at least regular season-wise. A very disappointing end to what was a fantastic second season for us here in D.C. This offseason, we decided we needed even a little bit more help. Made a big blockbuster trade for De'Aaron Fox. Super excited to have him here. Here's what the team's going to look like. Fox and Mitchell, just a banana land backcourt. Ingram here at our three. Got Flag and Sar still holding down the front court bench unit. Kalul Bale is up to an 85 I'm going to give him six-man responsibilities off the bench. Hakez is going to take over as the seventh man behind him. Tyus Jones still in here. Yusuf Nurkic we brought in as a nice backup center option. Obviously just made the trade for P.J. Washington. So um, this team is good. I mean, this is a clear-cut championship caliber team, and I hope 2K agrees. See you guys at the end of the final regular season. 69-13 and 13 to wrap up year number three here in Washington. I'll take it. We have to have a good playoff run, though, or none of this means a damn thing. Another MVP for Luka. Cameron Boozer, Rookie of the Year. Is this Carlos Boozer's son? I believe it is. There's Walker, Sixth Man of the Year. Victor Wembanyama, another deep boy. Tyrese, it's Proctor. I don't know why it says Prosper. This game and its stupid draft class is always changing names. Ben Matherin, Clutch Player of the Year, now a member of the Orlando Magic. Mark Dagnall does get Coach of the Year honors. Takes it home for us here with what I'm assuming is the best record in basketball. And it was, which is obviously awesome. We had the second best ra record last year, though. Didn't mean a damn thing. Here are the numbers. Not a single guy 20-plus points a game, but that's fine by me because we had, what, five guys 15-plus? That's insane. All right, round one. Us in the New York Knicks. We lost to a New York team last year. Did Jalen Brunson go back to the Knicks? No, no, he just never left. Okay, I don't know why. He was in free agency. I thought he went to, like, Houston or something. I might have been mistaken. All right, we take a quick 2-0 lead on them, make it 3-0. They do win game four. However, we do win the series in five. It is us in the 76ers. Robert Dillingham, Tyrese Maxey, Isaac Coral, Matos Buzelis, and Bede. you got John Collins off the bench, Isaiah Hartenstein, a lot of big men. Uh, that's a talented 76ers team. I'm not going to lie to you, but I do think we are better. We are 2-2 with them right now. Go up 3-2, close them out in six. Us in the six-seeded Atlanta Hawks, who no longer have Tyrese, or Tyrese Maxey, Trey Young, excuse me, if Bones Highland, DeJounte Murray, Franz Wagner, Tyler Smith, and Kongu, Reed Shepard off the bench, no thanks. All right, we are taking on Luka and the Dallas Mavericks here in the NBA Finals. This team is pretty good. Added Larry Markkinen, got Jabari Smith, Derek Lively, got Vucevic off the bench. This is going to be a tough challenge. They definitely have the best player in the series, but I think overall-wise, we are a better team. We are tied 2-2. Go up 3-2. We fucking get it done. We close them out in six, and Cooper Flag, your finals MVP. I wanted a championship there. I really did. You know, I would have been very disappointed. This team was absolutely insane, and it continues my streak. I mean, it's only two so far, but every single offseason rebuild we've done, we've won a championship. I'm just saying. Just putting it out there. Now, this one was a ton of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed as well. Of course, uh, I'm not going to do one of these every single day, so if you guys have anything else you really want to see, make sure to let me know down below in the comment section. But this one was an absolute blast. I hope you guys enjoyed it. As always, thanks so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.